Welcome to our today's tutorial from the TwinSafe department. Today I will show you how you can use an N.2.2 .2 safety encoder with our AX8000, respectively our TwinSafe motion wizard. My name is Martin Früchtel from the Product Management Safety. After giving you some basic information about the system overall and our demo system, I will shortly explain our approach for the tutorial today and after the live demonstration, as always, we will have an outlook to the following tutorials and a short Q&A about the NDAT 2.2 safety encoder integration. In today's tutorial, we want to create and configure an AX8000 SLS Safe Limited Speed Safety Project uh, with the use of an N.2.2 .2 safety encoder as prerequisites. As always, you need a Twinker 3 version greater or equal to 4024.11, an TE9000 version greater or equal to 1211, a TwinSafe firmware greater or equal to 03, and at least an AX8000 firmware version 0104 with the default module ID active. The start of our tutorial today is a complete Twinkcat 3 solution with I.O. configuration, a standard PLC, and an EL6910 project, which our AX8000 should communicate with. Our hardware consists of an CX for the Ethercat communication and a standard PLC. We have an EL6910 as TwinSafe master logic, which is communicating to the EL1918. Uh, where a light barrier is connected to, we have an AX8000 in the X2XX safe motion version. And for today, we have a motor with N.2.2 .2 safety encoder integrated. The required safety functionality today is we want to trigger unsafe limited speed functionality on the AX8000 via the EL6910 communication and the AX8000 should use the signal of the N.2.2 .2 safety encoder for the SLS functionality. And we can already start with our live demonstration. We have our TwinCat 3 solution with our two N.2 encoders. And in the first step, we start TwinSafe Wizards, start Safe Motion Wizard. We choose our AX8000. And in the next step, we configure our feedback. Per default, we have an OCT single turn and an OCT multi turn option, which is of course communicating over OCT safety. And we have the possibility to choose other motors. In the case of an N.2.2 .2 safety encoder, we would have to choose other motors because it's not an OCT safety encoder, of course, but in order to realize a safe limited speed functionality for the end dot encoder in the current version of the TwinSafe motion wizard, we choose OCT uh, multi-turn as feedback for channel A and other motors for channel B. And today we want to realize an SLS functionality for channel A, so we choose SLS for channel A, channel B, is left as it is. We rename our safety project to NDAT demo. We map it to our existing EL6910. We verify our safe addresses and start the generation of the safety project. The safety project we now have is an AX8000 safety project which is configured for OCT safety multi-turn for channel A. So if we go to the target system and to the internal safety parameters, we go to the object C240, where we see the primary feedback parameters. And within that object, we have the primary feedback parameter CRC. But of course, that CRC is calculated for OCT safety. So in order to convert it to an encoder safety project with NDAT 2.2, we have to get the NDAT 
2.2 CRC. So we have to go to the AX8000 COE object. There again, we go to the object C240. Under the object C240, we verify all the encoder parameters. And the last sub object is the parameter CRC 06E3 in this case. So we re remember that CRC and we just have to put it into our safety parameters for the target system. So 06E3. And basically, that was all for the conversion to an N.2.2 safety project. So in the next step, as always, we have to configure our connection to the EL6910. So we go to the EL6910 and link all the missing signals. The signals are shown red here because we are using an already existing project. So we connect the STO signals for channel B and channel A. We connect the SLS bit, which we are using today for the tutorial. And of course, the missing arrow egg and SS1 signals for both channel B and channel A. So basically, that was all for the generation of the Safety functionality. In the last step we still have to do, of course, is to configure our SLS functionality. To do that, we go to the AX8000 safety project to the corresponding TwinSafe group for SLS1. And we have a safe limit function block where we configure our pre-calculated values. And basically, now our safety function SLS with an N.2.2 safety encoder is done. So we start the multi download to get the system running. We enter the username and our password. We verify the serial numbers and start the download. After the download is finished, we verify the CRCs and enter the password again to activate both projects in our case. So now our project has been generated, configured and downloaded. So we can start the online view. First, we go to the channel A error handling to see if the system is up and running. So we activate the online view and at the save mod function block, we see that the signal channel A primary feedback position valid is still missing. The reason for that is because the N.2.2 safety protocol takes longer time to start up. So we have to wait until the protocol is done and the valid signal is coming from the encoder. Should be done soon. So now the position is valid from the encoder and we can start our safety functionality test. So we go to the drive manager for channel A to get the motor running. We go to run motor. We enable the controller and acknowledge the existing error on the drive and configure our run motor function. So we set the target velocity to 20 and the target position to 
300 millimeters. Then we start the movement and we can go back to the Twink has three safety editor to the SLS function and we activate show online value to see the actual analog values of the n.2.2 safety position. Speed, sorry. So basically now we have configured the function correctly and we can go on with the remaining safety project. That was all for today's live demonstration. Next week we will have a closer look at the SPC functionality. So I will show you how you can configure and use safe break control locally on the AX8000. And in the second step, how you can use the SPC over the communication to the EL6910. The week after that, we will take a closer look at the safe break test functionality. That's all for today. Thanks a lot for your attention and hear you next week again.